Okay, there seems to be, based on some comments, some misunderstanding about what I was saying in the last message. So that means it's my job to make it more clear. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, rose from the dead after he was buried, according to the scriptures. And that message, if you believe it, saves you. But it's not those words as a formula that saves you. It's believing in the person and work of Jesus Christ. And the point I was making was that God has given us the scriptures to testify of who that person is. He's not left us in the dark. And, the, you know, somebody said, well, I thought the gospel is easy enough for a child to understand. That is true. And my son, who's eight years old, believes that Jesus died for his sins, according to the scriptures, and rose from the dead. And he knows who Jesus is. But I don't just leave it at that. I make sure he knows who Jesus is to make sure that he's believing the Jesus of the scriptures and not another Jesus. Uh, it's the Jesus that is rooted in the scriptures that the prophets promised. And again, when you see the apostles in the book of Acts, uh, and when they're writing their doctrinal statements about the gospel, like Romans, he's not talking to five-year-olds. He's talking to adults. <laughs> so, yes, the gospel's simple enough for a child to understand, but we're not children. Uh and the, God, the Bible is not written to children. We should be able to explain it to children. However, that doesn't get us off the hook to say, okay, how can I present it in such a distilled, watered-down way? And what is the formula I can present it in so that I can claim that I've got you as one of the saved people because you raised your hand and you can quote that formula? Because hyper-dispensationalists who I know can quote that formula, will deny up and down that uh, justification is by uh, faith alone throughout the scriptures. Well, how can they do that without denying God's testimony concerning his son? They deny the gospel that's in the scriptures. The gospel is promised in the scriptures. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. See, we, when we are sealed with the spirit of promise after we believe the gospel, we receive a spirit that testifies. And we will confess and not deny. If we deny the testimony of Christ, we are at least a heretic. If not, um, not a believer. You know, maybe, we, maybe you're confused. But if you're pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and you deny all the essential doctrines related to Christ his person, and his work. Eventually, you saying, I believe Jesus, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 is the gospel, 1 through 4, and that's the plumb line, and you're not allowed to measure by anything else, well, then you've just reduced the gospel to a creed. No, it's Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. It's what the scriptures say. And if you deny the scriptures, then 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 doesn't mean anything. It, that's what I mean by it is not a creed that you can just repeat and say, because I can say those verses and I believe that, that means I'm saved. No, you actually have to believe in Jesus Christ. You actually have to believe that he's the son of God, that he became a man, that he was the one that the God promised uh, that to deal with the sins of humanity. Um, and there are some basics that First John describes, that he became by blood and by water, that he's the propitiation for the sins, our sins and the sins of the whole world, that he came in the flesh and he is God himself. He's the eternal life. The spirit in you, if you are born of God, will confess and not deny these things. It'll bear witness in you. And when you hear the testimony, as you learn more, you'll agree. You may struggle intellectually with understanding how can God be three and but one and all that stuff. But you will not rail against the doctrine of Christ and hate those who believe it. You know, what this is what we're talking about. So I don't want to say, I did not say that that is not the gospel. 
What I'm saying is if you were to say that that formula, if you present it as a formula and assume that everybody holds to that formula that believes the gospel and yet they don't actually believe the scriptures, then that's not the gospel. The gospel is not just those words. It's what those words say. He died for our sins according to the scriptures and he uh, was buried and rose on the third day according to the scriptures. And the scriptures at that time was all the prophecies. And yes, the apostles and Jesus took them through the Old Testament to establish their faith in the word to show them who this Jesus was. And the more you speak the word, the more someone's accountable. What we do is we say, well, I gave them a tract that said 1 Corinthians 15, and they didn't receive it. I don't know when they're going to get saved. Maybe somebody else will give them a tract that says 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and then they'll get saved. I'm going to pray for them until then. No, the, the, the apostles would debate from morning to night to establish the identity of Jesus Christ from the scriptures, uh, to thoroughly ground people in who is this person, what is God's program, and that's why people are tossed to and fro, is because they don't get that grounding. So not only are there are many saved people who don't understand what it means, that come away, maybe they are saved, but there's many people who do an altar call that aren't saved that don't understand what they were responding to. Uh, and they probably also don't know that 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is the gospel, you know. But when we keep saying that this is the plumb line and reducing everything to the lowest common denominator, say this is the plumb line, everything else is secondary. That is not true. The litmus test is not 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 as a set of verses. It's what those verses contain. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and rose. And what we're dealing with is people who deny everything the scriptures say about his death and resurrection and yet insist on being received as believers and saying that that passage is the plumb line. That's what I'm talking about. And at this point, I mean, I hope you get that's what I'm saying. Yes, for, yes, that's the gospel. If you believe it, you're saved. Assuming you believe the Jesus of the Bible. You know, Mormons will tell you, and Catholics will tell you, Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you, Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. But the Mormons will tell you that Jesus was the, uh, was the uh, flesh brother of Lucifer, and Adam is his father, and Adam is God. And the Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you that uh, Jesus is not God. He's a created being. Okay? They are denying essential things that the scriptures tell us about who this Jesus is. It's that Christ died. In other words, that person. Who is that person? Okay, you have to go to other verses to establish who that person is. It's not just a matter of saying Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? Well, Jesus means Jehovah saves. And Christ means he was the anointed one. And the fact that he's Jesus Christ means he became a man to accomplish something in his flesh. But he's Jehovah, which means he's God and man. You have to believe that. You can't be saved and not believe that. And yet you don't get that from 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. You've got to say a little more, don't you? So, uh, saving faith is based on a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, which is based on what the gospel teaches us about his person and work, and that is more than just the formulaic presentation of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's what the scriptures say about him. Because Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Well, who is Christ? You've got to go to the scriptures to see it. What do you mean he died for our sins? Well, you got to go to the scriptures to see that. What do you mean he rose from, rose from the dead? Exactly what does that mean? Well, he was actually appointed the Lord in Christ. He inherited a name higher than any other name. 
He's actually enthroned. And God gave him as a man authority to execute judgment on all flesh. These are basic things that a child can understand, by the way. Children aren't that stupid. They can understand the concept of a king. You know, we want to reduce it to such an, such an extent that you don't have to understand anything. And that's not what God is. He is a communicator. God is a storyteller. And he loves to tell who he is. And he's given us our whole life to know him. And he doesn't cheapen his word. He puts it above his name. No, you don't have to be a theologian, quote, in seminary to be saved. But you are. You do have to be a theologian to be saved. It means you have to know something about who God is. And he has to reveal that to you. And it has to be based on the word and what the scriptures say about Jesus Christ, who he is and what he accomplished. No, there's nothing more than the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins and our justification that, is, that we need to know and believe to be saved. But we need to believe it according to what the scriptures reveal about it. And then we also discover that that's not just the food for the entrance of the Christian life. It's also so deep that for the rest of our life, we discover more and more and more. But the way it's being handled right now is, oh, no, that's what I heard at the Billy Graham thing. These people are saying we have to learn that uh, and, and repeat it to ourselves over and over and over. Are they even saved? Well, no wonder they have that thought. It's because it's handled like a creed. You know, it's cheapened. That's what I'm talking about. No, I'm not saying you have to know more than that, but it is the responsibility of the evangelist and the teachers who are giving the gospel to make sure that they know that those who are receiving the gospel understand from the scriptures who they're talking about. And that's, that responsibility is on the speaker, not the hearer. You make sure that in your presentation, you're not diluting its power, you know. Um, okay, well, hopefully that helps.